Hi guys and uh, welcome to um, my video video uh, ride day 34, 35, one of those two, can't remember. Uh, anyway, this is now heading uh, from um, Jaco, uh, Costa Rica, where I spent two nights and heading uh, towards the, uh, the uh, Panama border. Um, and I'm, I was going to go a lot further, but uh, there was a forecast rain, so I ended up making a shorter stop into uh, David uh, in Panama. Um, it was a pretty good move, I've got to say, because once the rain started, phew, it was incredible. You'll see a little bit towards the end of the video, but it basically rained from when we when I got to the border. It started really raining. Uh, to about probably 10 minutes before the border, it started drizzling, and then when it then it just came down in buckets. It was just pouring with rain, and so it made the border crossing a little bit tricky because you want to keep all your paperwork dry, and you're not exactly undercover in all the areas you've got to go. And there's rain just pelting down everywhere. Um, also on the border, on the uh, Costa Rica side, uh, the border was filled with uh, a lot of the unfortunates from uh, Haiti, a lot of uh, refugees, and basically they all come across and they come to work on the farms and they all have to get a permit to work on the farms and to earn not much money at all, but money nonetheless. And. Uh, It takes them days to get processed, so it's a pretty sad state of affairs. But you know, it was all men too. So all the men have come over, you know, because of all the, the troubles in Haiti with the earthquakes and storms and hurricanes and stuff like that. They just never get a break in that country, seriously. And then all the people who pretend that they want to help them, you know, um, it, you know, it's it, it's crazy because when you look at the country and you look at the two different countries, one next to each other, and one of them is thriving and the other one is a, just a hellhole, you know. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty, it's pretty sad all around that. that. So anyway, um, I stopped off at a couple of places because I, if you look at the river here, the rivers were absolutely swelling and, and, and they were moving like so fast. It was pretty, you, you could never swim in these rivers. They were absolutely flying as some guys were trying to fish off the bridge, um, but it was a really pretty, pretty ride for the first part, and then, uh, then the border came, and uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I've never, I mean, I live in Miami Beach, so we get those really thick, thick thunderstorms, or you know, just basically tropical rain. But we get that here in Miami, we might get like an hour of it, and then it's sunny again. You know, in Panama, it just seemed to rain the whole time. So that my first day's ride to a David in Panama. Um, so basically from the border to David, it poured rain the whole time. And I met a guy named Eric Bernath, who's now, uh, who's an American adventure rider, quit his job and just got on the road. And um, um, and he, I've got the link in the, on, the, on the website to his uh, Instagram, he's a beautiful photographer. And he basically, he's doing, he went to South America, went to Galapagos Islands, he went to Antarctica. He's uh, fantastic and uh, a real a real treat to, uh, to, to have met. Uh, and now he's in South Africa, he's doing all of Africa, then he's going to cross over to, Australia, uh, to Asia and Australia. He's going right there in the world. Um, yeah, so that's one of the rivers that was coming around and was just flying with, uh, with, with rain. You can see now I'm getting closer to the border and it's, getting a little bit irky. Um, basically the camera's just, you know, it, I, I was too afraid because the, the thing is, I it's now, it's now I'm getting the rain. But what, what was happening with the camera was the battery, the camera was fine, but what happens, the battery started to swell, the battery got moisture in it and started to swell, so I just had to turn off the camera. And I didn't get any other footage after after the rain, when when I got uh, when I um, my light was flashing on my wristband, I didn't know what was going on, and then I took my helmet off to look, and that it had stopped recording and it just frozen. So I basically just turned it off. So I'm, I I haven't got any footage really uh, into in Panama, and it was just absolutely teeming down. Um, you know, I, I, I 
It, so it rained from when we entered Panama. It, I got to David, it was pouring with rain. Then we stopped off at a restaurant, Eric and I had something to eat and just chatted. And then, because he was catching the Star Rat boat to, uh, to Colombia as well. And then we met another guy, Ona, who, who's a Una Ona, who's also, we met him at the border, who's also gonna be on the, on the Star Rat as well. So everyone was trying to get there as quick as possible. Uh, I just mentioned in previous videos, I had to be there by the, the, the boat left on the 23rd, it didn't, it left on the 21st. So I had to be there by the 18th. And so this is the, I think today is the 16th of November. And uh, basically I had to get there because um, I had to make sure all the paperwork was fine. So they told us to get there a few days earlier, which I did, uh, contacted them, said them in town if they need me for anything. They didn't need me, but get there a few days earlier. And a few of the guys stayed at this hostel. I didn't want to stay at a crappy other hostel. I stayed at the hotel. Which was just okay, um, but um, yeah. So the border crossing. Um, so getting out of uh, getting out of Costa Rica was a one dollar. Uh, no, I think it was a seven dollar fee to get out of Costa Rica. Let me check. Um, yeah, you pay a seven dollar departure tax uh, getting out of Costa Rica, and then you pay a. Um, and then on the other side, entering Panama, you've got to pay one dollar. You've got to get a ticket. So let's just hang on. Let's just go back. So the de departure fee, you've got to get the receipt first. And there's a Banco Credito building, which is just on the left-hand side. It's pretty easy to see. Pretty easy to miss too. But just stop at the first building you see, mate. The first sort of official type building. There'll be cars and everything there. Um, you, you fill out. You have to fill out a, a small form on, on the Costa Rica side as well. And the problem was that everything was wet. Your hands were wet. Everything was just soaked. Um, and then give it to the official to get. To. So you pay the departure tax. Then you go to the immigration, the Salida window. You fill out a form, and then give it to the official. Then you have to go around the other side to the aduana office. There was only one guy in there. And there was like six or eight people waiting and then we got to the front of the queue and he gave us papers and then we had to go off and do the papers and then get back in the queue and he was like disappearing all the time coming back so that actually took about an hour to get out of uh of costa rica and cost us seven dollars and then to enter panama another painful central american process uh um you go there's a big building on the left and you go there and the first thing you got to do is buy a little ticket to get to the to go to the immigration window, uh, at the immigration window again, I, my passport got checked, and a guy and they got another guy to look over it to see if it had been tampered in any way. And, you know that 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 tear that happened on El Salvador border was uh, was the start of a few, a few painful moments for me, a few nervous moments. But uh, in the end, it, it all turned out okay. But you know, an immigration official tears your passport, and it can like the tiny little tear at the top of it. And on your passport page and that could ruin your whole trip. It's just so frustrating and like, you know, yeah, it'll be fine, you know, oh, okay. You know, he did it, knew, as soon as he did, he looked at me, looked up to me to see if I saw him do it. And then he goes, no problem, I'm no problem. Like, you know, and uh, yeah, problemo. Um, so anyway, when you get to uh, Panama side, you've got to get a $1 ticket. And then you've got to go, once you've got the ticket, you get in line and they actually, I got in one line and they said you're in the wrong line because it one's for vehicles and one's for just general people. So there was only one line for vehicles and there was like four lines for, for general people. So I got in the vehicle line, waited, got to the front of the line, got my stamp out, uh, my stamp in, sorry. And then I had to go across the road to get insurance and I had a helper following me everywhere. Eric was with me and I didn't mind him helping. I was going to give him a few dollars. Uh, and then that's where we met Ona, uh, the, uh, another adventure rider, and he just started chatting to us. And this guy who was helping us and his mate just said, hey, hey, mate, he's with us, he's ours. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about, you idiot? He's a freaking another rider. Like that. I said, that's it, go away. I just said that, you know, just ruined it, you know, what an idiot. Um, if, if he didn't know that that guy was a rider, that guy was just a rider telling us, how, 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 showing us what we've got to do next. Um, and it was really helpful. So when, once we knew what we had to do, we just got rid of those guys for being rude anyway. I would have given him a few dollars, but he was just a dick. Um, so you go across the other side, you've got to have copies of everything and you'll get two, insur uh, two, two copies of your insurance and you've got to go back to the original building and get your aduana around the back. Um, and then once you've got your aduana, it's a, this, is a, this takes a while, all this. Uh, then you... Um, 
then you go to fumigation, which you do, you pay another one dollar for fumigation. But uh, uh, the, uh, I've been reading that you also have to go and get checked down the road. But basically, they checked our bikes at fumigation, um, and then we're off. Uh, the total time on on the uh, Panama side was one and a half hours, around, probably a little bit more than that. One dollar for the ticket, fifteen for insurance, and one dollar for fumigation, uh, and then we're on our way. Um, but um, I was only spending one night in David, so it wasn't you know such a big deal uh, for me about where I stayed. I ended up staying at a place called the Bamboo Hostel, which is a little bit out of the city. It doesn't matter, the rain didn't matter. We I wasn't going anywhere. Um, but met some nice people there. Uh, one girl who was uh, making software for hostels around uh, around South, uh, Central and South America, um, and a few other a few other people, nice people. Uh, went across the road, had a bite to eat, brought it back to the hostel, and there's a really nice little kitchen area. There's also a um, there's also a, a bar out the back and a swimming pool. But with the weather, it didn't matter. But met some nice people there. Just a quick chat. I was pretty tired, and you know, it was a a, a long a, a long riding day for not going very far at all. But just with the weather, you just couldn't. In parts, you couldn't stop. And then we stopped for lunch, Eric and I, and um, had a bite to eat. And he he left because he had to keep going. Um, he was going a lot further down the road. I was staying in uh, David, and uh, and. Uh, I'm pretty sure he regretted that <laughs> because it was pretty. It rained all the all the time for him as well. Um, so I didn't have that far to go once I crossed the border, but it just took so long. There were certain parts of the road I had to just pull over. I couldn't see anything at all, and um, and it was just too dangerous. And you know, car, some cars were still going the same normal speed and just whizzing past, and you're sitting on your bike with not a lot of lights um, in pouring rain. Just too dangerous. Not worth it get off the road and then even after we had lunch I ended up waiting another 45 minutes at the uh, at the restaurant because I, we were close to David anyway and um, it was just ridiculous the amount of rain that we were getting. So here's some little shots along the way, really lush green, pretty cool. Um, my tank bag is not waterproof, it's a, it's a pain at that tank bag from KTM. 175 US dollars. I mean, it's fine for basic stuff, but it's just not up to scratch. And uh, I know a lot of uh, tank bags aren't waterproof, but the next one I'll, I'll be getting will be um, because it's just painful having. It just takes a while, but the water just gets into the KTM. I've got a cover for it as well, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you just don't want to have to worry about stuff like that. If, when, when I find it for the next adventure, the, when I find a, a really good, here's, here's the sort of rain you were getting. As you can see that, compared to the GoPro, see how it just washes off, the, the, the rain washes off the, the, um, the ghost drift, the drift ghost. So I have that, see so you can see my helmet, I have a little bit open just to get some air in. But uh, it was pretty hard yakka. Um, just the, the amount of rain was just incredible um, and it just kept going you know it went from all it was still raining the next morning when I left uh, David I ended up getting uh, from David to Panama City um, the next ride I ended up getting there and, and I had patches of sunshine but it was a tough day the following day as well and um, it was raining once I got to it was actually sunny when I got to Panama City but then within half an hour it was raining again. So a pretty wet all round experience in Panama City and then a couple of nights in Panama City and then we then we, we head off to um, the San Blas Island area that where, where the indigenous, it's an indigenous land and it's been set aside by Panama for these people who live off the grid themselves. They have electricity but uh, nothing else and you know they ship water and stuff like that but um, you know really pretty little area but uh, pretty hardcore and they make money from obviously doing these sort of things being a transit place from leaving uh, leaving it but I suggest that if you're gonna go from Panama to Colombia you definitely go on the Star Wrap if you can get but you need to book two three months in advance 
um, and at different times of the year they get that the ship goes off and does other adventures as well so you'll have to find alternatives but you've really got to be even three to six months in advance you've really got to look at how you're going to go because there's two or three boats that do it uh, on a regular basis um, and uh, the beauty of getting it done by a proper authorised company that does this all the time with motorbikes is that they do all the paperwork for you. So this is the hostel, uh, the bamboo, under cover I've got my bike, got it all uh, cleaned up, it, it looks nice now with all the rain, it's giving it a nice clean. Um, but uh, yeah, and I just basically sat out there on the tables and did some work and internet was very basic. Again, I don't understand why. There's no excuse for it in most most major cities or most cities now. The internet, if they have the proper Wi-Fi, like having that Google Wi-Fi throughout the place, would just make a massive difference for a few hundred dollars, and would probably give them tens of thousands of dollars extra a year in business. But anyway, um, so that was my border crossing from um, Costa Rica to. Um, to Panama, all the details are on the on the blog post, and there's a link in the uh, in the description for that. So have a great day, guys, and uh, we'll talk again when I get to Panama City.